God's will is to bless you. If you're not blessed, it's not that God doesn't want to bless you. There are many things we can do to hinder that blessing. If you're not blessed, God does want to bless you. The centurion of Capernaum, it was his faith. It will, it will go down through the ages. He'll be known throughout the whole world. He, he didn't know it. He didn't realize it. He, didn't, he may not even realize that it was being recorded or it would be recorded. It would be made note of, but he just did his thing and was blessed. He didn't know he's going to be known all over the world. But because of his faith, and later on, when the gospel goes out from Israel and to the Gentiles, the first Gentile to believe who will stand for all the rest and will be baptized is a Roman centurion. Same thing. Why was this guy blessed? You could say God just wanted to bless him, yeah. But God wants to bless all, so why not all? God wants all of us to be blessed. God wants all of us to know his miracle, whatever that is, and it comes in many forms. I used to get letters in the mail, you probably did too, where it said, you've won a million dollars in the lottery. The prize is waiting for you. You just have to claim it. Of course, there's like pages of fine print because it's all pretty much a scam. I mean, they're just kind of go with your emotions. But these, the, those things are generally false. But with God, it's real. You have something worth more than a million dollars, and it's waiting to be released. God's blessings are better than the lottery, and they are waiting, but not everybody has it or knows it. But what was it about the centurion? If we can find out what was it about his life that just opened up his life for blessing, why? Well, I'm going to share 10 keys now. Secrets of a blessed life. You can take any one of them, but you can take more than one. And any one of them will more open your life for what God has and the blessings, blessings of God on your life. Number one, first key, he loved Israel. Why is that a key? Because God says it. God said 4,000 years ago almost, he said, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. That has held true, that law of blessing and cursing has held true from the days of the pharaohs to the days of the United States. God is real. And that's not just for nations. It doesn't say the nation that blesses you. Of course, it includes that. It says whoever. So it's not just nations, it's individual lives. So lives, well, first I'll start with this one. The I mean, first of all, he loved Israel. So those who love Israel, but not only love Israel, but he didn't just love them, he put his love into action and he blessed them. He blessed them and he was blessed. It's not an accident. I have never met a person who hated the Jewish people and was a blessed person. Never, never. You can see the curse right over them. First of all, you hate this, but there's a, such a, a curse over anyone who hates Israel. It, always, always. And you look, at, you look at some great people in history and they end up destroying themselves. And I've never met a believer who truly loved and blessed Israel and the Jewish people who wasn't blessed. Never, never. And I know, sorry, when I go around and I'm preaching other places, I've been at churches where they said, they told me the same story. They said, we started, you know, we give to mission, we give in all, but we, said, but we didn't give specifically to Israel. We started like every week giving to Israel. God just, I've heard that again and again and again and again. Again and again. We saw it here too. We always give to all the, but we did especially, God blesses. Amen. Bless Israel. Bless the Jew, and I'm not saying this for my sake. I don't need, I'm, not, I'm saying, bless the Jewish people. Pray for their salvation. You are blessed through them if you're not Jewish. Bless Israel. Pray for them. Bless them. Give to things where they're giving the gospel to them or the blessing. God will bless. Number two, key, he had a heart of compassion. He did. He was a man of compassion. He had to. He had a compassion on the Jewish people. He had compassion on his servant that he would travel, he would go wherever it was, and he'd find this rabbi and intercede. Keep a heart of compassion. There's a proverb in the Hebrew that says, basically, the heart of blessing is going to be blessed. The one who has the heart of blessing is going to be blessed. If your heart is to take and take and take, and you're living selfishly, you're thinking about yourself all the time, you're not going to be blessed. Because as you do, it's done. If you're always taking, you're going to lose. But if you're always giving and you live your life to give, it's going to bless you right away because you're going to get your eyes off yourself, your eyes off your problems. You're not going to live. When you're living in love, it casts out anxiety and fear. And God is going to bless you. 
Number three, not only have a heart of compassion, practice compassion, but practice generosity, giving. This man was a giver. He was generous. He didn't just feel warm. He actually gave. Generous. Undoubtedly, he wanted to bless. He was a blesser. And God blesses those who bless, period. It says it in the Bible. Bless, be generous, bless those in need, bless others. God will bless you. Don't, you're not going to lose. You're going to get back more. Number four, he was a humble man. He said, I'm not worthy. Now this guy, this guy is technically over the Jews and technically he's over many Romans. He is a, he has a, he probably has a household. He probably is rich in some way, but he stayed humble. You want blessings? Stay humble. A prideful heart cannot get blessed. God can't bless pride. And you can't, a prideful heart can't even receive. But a humble heart is the one that God says, I'll dwell in that heart. I'll bless that life. He'll lift up the humble, the meek, the humble yourself in the presence of God. And what, what? God will lift you up. Number five. Very simple. What did he do? He didn't, he, he approached the Lord with his need. The centurion, if the centurion had not approached the Lord, there'd be no story here. It started when he approached Messiah. He could have just stayed with a guy. He could have just stayed and he could have been gloomy and he could have been, he could have been, could have been a, you know, he could have been very close, a dying servant. He could have had sorrow and sorrow and just sat there. Some of you are sitting with your problem. Some of you are, st are staying at the bedside of your problem. You're dwelling on the problem. You're bemoaning the problem. That's not going to bless you. Some of you are sitting with an unmet need all the time and not bringing it to God, and you're dwelling on what you don't have. But a need that is not brought to the Lord will separate you from the Lord. A need that is brought to the Lord will bring you closer to the Lord. Think about this. A need that you have that is not brought to the Lord will separate you from God, but a sin that you bring to the Lord will bring you closer to God. Approach the Lord no matter what. Whatever you got, bring it to God. Whatever the issue is, bring it to God. Whatever the difference is, bring it to God. Whatever the sin is, bring it to God. He said, come, let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sin is as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Bring it to me. Even with sin, bring it to God. Approach the Lord. The sin is not going to stop you from God. Not with Messiah. It's not going to stop you. But not bringing it will. No matter how ungodly, no matter what the shame is, bring it to God. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org 